Um, just yesterday uh, in, in this building, the gentleman from Ashland hosted an event here at the State House called The Faces of EBT. The featured speaker was a woman named Katie Brandt, and she is a beneficiary, or was a beneficiary, of food stamps and used DTA assistance to help her deal with difficult circumstances. Katie grew up in West Bridgewater before living in Taunton as a newlywed and currently resides in East Bridgewater. And she and her husband were well-educated, both holding master's degrees. When the couple's baby turned 10 months old, a string of terrible events occurred. Um, first, Katie's husband was diagnosed with frontotemporal degeneration, which is a neurological disorder with a terminal diagnosis. Four days after that, Katie's mother died unexpectedly of a heart attack. Shortly thereafter that, Katie's father was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Let's be clear, nobody wants to go through what Katie Brandt went through. No one expects their husband to have a terminal neurological disorder. No one expects their mother to pass away from a heart attack and their father to be diagnosed with Alzheimer's, all within the span of 21 days. During these 21 days, Katie became the primary caretaker for three dependents, her husband, her father, and her infant son. In this process, she lost her job, the family's house was foreclosed upon, and she ended up on food stamps. Nobody wakes up one day and says, hey, today is a good day to go on food stamps. Nobody wakes up and says, hey, today is a great day to start living on $618 a month, which by the way, happens to be the average welfare amount for a family of three. And by the way, she was not on welfare because she didn't qualify. Stories like Katie's are retold to our offices throughout this state house. Week after week, my office is inundated with heartbreaking calls from people like Katie. So many people that we all know go through strings of misfortune. So many in this room we love and people we love go through strings of misfortune. Again, nobody wakes up and says, hey, today is a good day to go on food stamps. Nobody wakes up and says, hey, Today is a great day to start living on $618 a month. Nobody wishes this on anyone, whether it's someone we love or someone we've never met. So when these people call our offices, it's our job to help them. People deserve dignity and the ability to strive to once again be self-sufficient. This issue isn't easy. There's misunderstanding. <laughs> There's a lot of misinformation, and just like any law that passes in this commonwealth, there's always someone who will decide to abuse it and abuse our system. I was appointed um, by the speaker to serve on the cashless commission, which meant from October to December of 2012. The lady from Taunton also served on this commission with me. This commission was implemented through last year's budget process. It also included allocated, allocating $100,000 to hire a consultant to go through options and finish with a report that had to be filed in both branches of this legislature by December 31st, 2012, which we did. The consultant was the Ripples Group, who worked with the state before. The head of the Ripples Group is a man named Attila Habib, who, was an, who has an MBA from Columbia, and was formerly a consultant for Bain and Company. In the past, they were tasked with studying WIC and, uh, having, and the, the process of having WIC switch from a check to a card system, okay? That study has been ongoing since July 2007. Ripples understood our system and knew the limitation of state services. Through the Ripples Group, our commission looked at nine different options to research, discuss, and ultimately make recommendations on. Every single meeting ended with questions like this. Are there any other questions? Is there anything else we should be looking at? Every single meeting ended like that. The consultants, most of the commission members and their staffs, invested thousands of hours researching the many questions raised and the options before us. 
The majority of us were very committed to making sure that $100,000 of taxpayer money spent was worth the investment. The Commission and Ripples explored nine options. One, doing nothing. Two, increased education and enforcement. Three, no cash to high-risk clients. Four, no out-of-state ATMs or point of sales. Five, blocking select ATMs, which we do. Six, blocking select ATMs and point of sales. Seven, only giving $100 of cash per month. Eight, going cashless. And nine, cashless plus UPC level control. Those were the nine options we looked at. Some of what the con commission concluded was, option eight, which was the completely cashless system, would cost at least $3 million to implement and has a yearly operational cost of at least $4.5 million. So things like laundry, babysitting, transportation, they can't necessarily be paid without cash, therefore it would severely impact people's livelihoods. Option seven was only the $100 cash per month. The implementation of this is $4 million and a yearly operational cost of $6 million. And the consultants determined that it's more expensive and brings few extra benefits. Option nine, which was the toughest one, the completely cashless system plus the UPC level control, this commission voted unanimously to reject because the cost was so obscenely high. Minimum impl Im implementation cost was $25 million and a mi minimum of $6 million per year of operational costs. Additionally, it would hurt businesses in this Commonwealth because the cost that the businesses would have to incur to implement the system would be significant. So if we are serious about helping our system operate as efficiently as possible, we need to stop the rhetoric and the grandstanding and look at the facts. This legislature has limited the use of EBTs at various places in merchandise that is non-essential. In this budget before us today, we go even further, such as requiring photo ID on EBT cards. So again, if we're serious about helping our system operate as efficiently as possible, we also have to be serious about helping those people that need and deserve these benefits, people like Katie Brandt. And as the lady from Taunton mentioned in earlier debates today, she said, we should be proactive about protecting our kids. She's right. And these benefits help kids. Kids whose families stretch every penny of the $618 per month that they receive to live. Like I said, no hardworking people want to wake up to life-altering circumstances or experience a string of misfortune. I don't get calls from people that want to abuse the system. My office gets calls from people whose lives have turned upside down and now depend on this very system to help them once again become self-sufficient. That's our job, and that's what this program and other programs help us do. I hope the further amendment is adopted. Chair recognizes Mr. <laughs> Chair.